So as today is Mother's Day, I thought about not just talking about mothers, <laughs> but talking about women. Because when you marry, when, you, when a man think about marrying a, a woman, okay, or a girl, we think about, can this person be a good wife for me, right? Do you guys think like that, or is it only me? <laughs> I was 13 years old when I thought about getting married, and I was looking for somebody that um, I can feel I could marry, right? I met some really nice, pretty girls, and some of them had really nice bodies, nice skin, but it was always something that I didn't like. And I would say, you know what, she's pretty, she's nice, nice body, everything a guy would think about, but just this one thing I just didn't like about her, you know? So I would kind of fall away from being too close. One time I got really close to a girl, and um, in, the middle of our converse, in the middle of our relationship, I had to tell her, you know, I don't feel for you. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's kind of a hard thing, right? Especially, I mean, for a guy, if, if you get close to a girl, and she tells you, you know, I, I love you a lot, but you know, you're just like my, like my brother. Who likes to hear that? <laughs> that crushes a guy's heart, you know? At least for me, I had many girls do that to me because, as you notice, I have many girls around me. And even when I was a kid, I still had many girls around me. It was just, I don't know, girls was attracted to be friends with me. Emphasis on friends, right? And that's what they would tell me sometimes. I like you a lot, you know, Ricky or Richie, they call me, but, you know, we're just, we're just friends. You're just like my brother, you know? I hated to hear that, but after a while I got used to it. <laughs> You know, I got used to it. And when I met my wife, she told me the same thing, you know. <laughs> You're like my little brother. You know, I got a little sister that, that, uh, that is for you. But with my wife, I didn't give up, you know. I made sure she couldn't do without me. Make sure she couldn't do without seeing me every day. We would, like, eat in a cafeteria because we were on a military base. And every time we go to the cafeteria, I'd always let her sit down first. And I would go facing her all the time. <laughs> Let her know that I'm checking her out. And her friends would tell her, you know that guy's always watching you, always looking at you. And when I found out, I try to find out what she needs, what she wants, and I try to do it. You know, I always try to do it. Uh, so I made sure that she couldn't do it without me, you know. So for you young guys here, we got, uh, you know, that's what you do, okay. When somebody like you, you make sure they can't do it without you. But anyway, getting back to women now, right? A guy would always think, at least for me, what kind of woman would I want? What kind of woman? What kind of girl I want to marry? And in the Bible, uh, there's a there's a topic in the Bible that talks about this type of woman. It says a woman of noble character, and it's found in a book of um, um, Proverbs, and and that's where we'll go today. The book of Proverbs. Most of Proverbs is written by, by Solomon, but this particular pro book wasn't written by him. This chapter wasn't written by him. But um, if you're using the Bibles we have here, in the English, um, the English Bibles, it's uh, Vietnamese Bible, it's 1108. The Chinese is page 1085. The Korean, 946. The English is 1054. That's where we'll start. The Spanish, 832. Again, Vietnamese, 1108. Chinese 1085, Korean 946, English 1054, and the Spanish 832. And this uh, is written by a king named uh, Lemuel. And, you know, most of the names in the Bible where this has an E-L at the end, it's some, it refers to God. And, and his name, um, King Lem, Lemuel, uh, means uh, devoted to God. I guess he was a person, well, even before he was born, perhaps, God perhaps gave him that name, showing that he would be devoted to God. And he wrote this uh, Proverbs about a wife of noble character, or you might say a woman of noble character, right? Some things that a man should look for besides the outward appearance, right? Sometimes guys always see his outward appearance, right? Because, you know, men are visual, you know. Somebody told me that. This girl told me that. She said, you know, men are visual. We, we are affected by visual things a lot. Women, women are too to a certain point, though. 
you know. But it's not their focus. It's not their main focus, you know. That's why, you know, somebody was telling me late, recently, you know, this beautiful lady had this ugly guy. And I said, because she wasn't focused on what he looked like. She focused on what his character was, what his personality was. That was the main thing. And this person was a model. So I was thinking, okay, she's a model. So a model doesn't want another model. You know, maybe she thinks, I want an ugly guy. Because nobody would want him. He'd always be with me. <laughs> Okay, that's just my logic, sorry. <laughs> but there are some people who think like that, okay. <laughs> but this book now shows you about a uh, woman of noble character. It tells you, it shows you the things you should look for when you want to get a good woman, when you want to get a wife. You know, this is the quality of a wife that you should think about, right? Not just, okay, she's pretty, she's going to make beautiful children, right? That's what guys would think about. You know, you look at the woman, you said. I was, what, what would the children look like? Right? Not, what would the children be like? What would they act like? We focus more on what they look like. But this man, God inspired him to write this down, and that would be part of the Bible so that we can see that that should not be always the main focus right? when we look for a good woman. So Proverbs chapter 31, Proverbs chapter 31, reading from the NIV, New International Version, verse 10, it says, A wife of noble character. Who can find? I right? mean to say, that's what we should be looking for. Right? We should look for a wife of noble character. And it's not easy to find. You have to look for it. Right? You have to evaluate. That's why dating is good. Some people meet somebody next thing you know, they get married quickly. And then they said, I didn't know all about this. I didn't know this. I didn't know that. Well, that's why you date. You date and you observe the person. I think I told you guys before I met this girl who was really into this guy. They were dating. She even went back to his state. They um, went out for a while. And then she, next time I saw her, she came back. I said, what about such and such person? She said, he's very nice, but I didn't like the way he made decisions. I said, wow, she's a little more mature than I thought. So she broke up the relationship. All right, does some of you think like that? If you have somebody that doesn't do make good, decisions, financial decisions, or whatever decisions, you think about maybe that's not good for your relationship in the future? Or you think, you know, I love the person so much, they will change. They will change for me. Isn't that what people think? Right? A, lot of, a lot of girls tell me that. Guys do. You know, I thought maybe my love will change them. You, know, you date with them, you tell them the things you don't like, and you give them time to change. And if they're not willing to change while you're dating, they will not change after you, after you get married to them. You need to know that. So you have to decide, can I live with this? Can I marry this person and live with this? Before you get into a relationship. No matter how good they look. Okay? That's what you have to deal with. So he said, a wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies, meaning far more than valuable things. She is a good treasure. If you can find a wife that is noble, that has a good character, something that you would be pleased to bring home to your parents. Verse 11, her husband has a full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. Right? So you need a wife that can take care of you. Okay, not that you're going to stay home and be a lazy bum, okay? <laughs> but you need a wife to be a wife to do things for you too. Um, you know, a lot of times you get married and what if one of you get hurt? I need somebody that can take care of you, right? Until you get better again. Right? I've, I've met some, some people that left their mate just because they became paralyzed. Right? So you got to think about those things. Right? Some people left their mate because they lost their job. And some men, this man I knew, he left his fiancée because he lost his job. And his fiancée is rich. And she told him, I'll take care of you, don't worry, until things get better. But he couldn't humble himself to let his fiance take care of him until he gets back on his feet. So he left her. And I spoke to her some time ago. She's married to somebody else. Sad thing, humility. You know, we need to be humble sometimes. So he says in verse 11, her husband is full of confidence in her, in her and lacks nothing. Verse 12, she brings him good not harm all the days of his life. Isn't it good to have a wife who's always good to you? Right? 
complimenting you, making you feel good all the time, right? Who wants a wife that always criticizing you? Anybody want that? Oh, a husband always crit. You know, it's about a man, but it's, I mean, about a woman, but you got to flip it around sometimes. It's about a man too. If you have a man always criticizing you, putting you down, beating you, making you feel bad, go the other way, you know? Hide, hide from him. If, you, if you're weak and you can't get away from him, hide from him. Block him, you know? Don't answer his calls, anything. Ask your friends to help you. It wouldn't end well. She brings him good, not, not harm, in all the days of his life, verse 13. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. So this is like needle and thread, you know, she makes clothes, right? This was what they do in those times. I mean, she prepares clothes for her family and for her husband. She's like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. So she brings good things, right? What does merchant ships do? They go from far away, they find things, they bring supplies in to the, you know, to the ship, people buy it. But she's like a ship, she brings things into the home. Right? So when you to do that, you have to go out and search and find good things and bring it to your home. So this is about these things, but it's the characteristics of a good woman who cares about you and cares about your family, cares about your house. Verse 15, she gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servant. So she not only does things for you, but she does things to other people too. A generous wife. How would you feel if you woman, you woman, okay, you visit your, 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 your son, you spend a day or two with your son, and his wife wouldn't cook for you? She said, you, you cook for yourself. <laughs> How would you feel? <laughs> you wouldn't feel good, right? You would tell your son, you know, that's a very disrespectful wife you have there, you know? I say that from experience. Okay? There are people like this <laughs> that are not respectful to their in-laws. There are actually people like this that I have met that are not respectful to their in-laws. So you have to think about that too. That's why you date. You date this person. Bring them around your friends, your family. See how they act with their friends and family. Okay? So verse 16 says, she considers the fields and buys it. So she had good financial decision. Right, she considers it. Why, what, why did it say she considers, considers it? I mean, she said, she thought to herself, okay, if I buy this field, what can it bring back for me? What are the benefits? You know? What interest? What will I get from buying this field? She buys, she considers it first, and then she buys it. Out of her earnings, she pays, she plants a vineyard. So she considered that she could make money from this situation. It's like going, okay, you go get a job. You know, some people just get any job, but you said you get a job that you consider that you can make money, but not just make money, but you can save money. Right? Some of us are in jobs that you cannot save money. Well, sometimes you need to reduce your standard of living so that you can save money and enjoy what you make. Otherwise, you get stressed out at work. Verse 17, she sets about her work vigorously. Right? Her arms are strong for her task. You know, she meaning to say, she's not a lazy wife. You know, there are some lazy wives, right? They do things halfway. They just don't care. Lazy, lazy people. So she's not lazy. She does it vigorously. I have to say, there are some lazy husbands too. Right? My father was a lazy husband. <laughs> That's what my mother told me. He was a lazy husband at one time. Um, he drinks a lot. Had work to do. He was a, a tailor. You know, he can make suits. He can make anything. He's just good at making stuff. And she said he had a long list of things to make. He didn't do it. Take orders and didn't do it. He just drinks and sometimes he does nothing. Um, so, don't be a lazy person. You know, lazy husband, lazy wife. You know, they are out there. You got to evaluate them, okay? Don't look at them because they're handsome. My father was very handsome. <laughs> I look at his picture and I said, wow, <laughs> I wish I looked like that. <laughs> he was a very, very handsome guy. I can see all the girls going crazy about him. You know, but looks can be a trap. Okay? Beauty can be a trap. You know? okay? Verse 18, she sees that her trading is 
profitable, right? So that means you not keep making the same financial mistake over and over and over again. She sees that it is profitable, and her lamb does not go out at night. It means that she always have something. Right? She always have something. See, this is the kind of woman a man should be looking for. Right? A woman that has ambition, you know, thinks about the future. What will I do? How can I make my family, how can I make my husband and my family, my children better? Verse 19, in her hand she holds a distaff and grasps a spindle with her finger. It's the same thing about making cloth and making clothes, making yarn. Um, it's a tool they use for uh, you know, making things, right? clothes or, 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 or rugs or from wool or, or something like that. She opens her arms to the poor so she is compassionate. And that's one of the things that attracted me to my wife too, you know, that made me say, you know, she isn't all that bad because she was generous to the poor. You know, and I, and I told her that, you always give to the poor, huh? She said, yeah, because I was poor once. Right? So she didn't forget that God brought her out of poverty and blessed her. Right? She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hand to the needy. You know, you cannot give everybody that need. You have to use, you know, common sense, discernment, understanding of the situation. And because some people will take advantage of you. I mean, I'm sure some of you know that. But you cannot use that as, a, as an excuse not to give either. Right? Because sometimes God even wants you to give to people that will take advantage of you. Do you know that? He brings them to you and He puts it in your head to give them. And you look at that situation, you know what they're going to do, but the Spirit of God says, give anyway. Right? That's like the song we just said, we just sang, only by grace. Right? Only by grace. Verse 21, when it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed with scarlet. I mean, they have clothes on. You know, I guess red was a big thing at this time. So, she, you know, she takes care of her family. I meet some, some, some mothers that their kids wear clothes that they shouldn't be wearing because the parents can afford better clothes, but they don't think about those things. They focus on other things. Verse 22, she makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed with fine linen and purple. You know, purple was a very expensive color to buy at this time. You know, Ati, Ati, has, uh, Ati, Mac, uh, Ati has purple on, right? The purple is everywhere. But during these times, it was hard to get the color. It, wasn't, it was an expensive thing to buy the color purple. And so the fact that she is able to buy it means she said she manages her finances well. Verse 23, her husband is respected at the city gates where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. So why did it bring up the husband being respected? Because a noble wife will not be talked about by others. Right? They will tell the man, man, you know what, you have a good wife. I wish I could have a wife like her. Right? And they wouldn't be referring to the beauty, you know, the outward beauty, but they would be referring to the inward character of the person. So he is respected because of that, right? respected. And even among the elders, he's respected. So even older people respect him too because they can see that his life and his wife and his family is a good example. Right? This is what God wants from you. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies merchants with satchels. So she's able to make things and sell things. You know, recently I, visit, I visited Vietnam. <laughs> Right, and I told my wife, I said, it's amazing because all these people in the city have houses, right? And they live upstairs and underneath they have a business. You know, and Jung, you know Jung? You remember Jung used to be in our place? She, um, in her little village, um, she said, uncle, this is my school. But it's a house. <laughs> I said, how can this be a school? She said, no, the, the teacher live upstairs and the two floors, three floors, Two floors downstairs at, at, at the school, and she taught people in the neighborhood, you know? And they said, wow. You know? And other people have a lot of businesses, little alleyways in their house, and there's a business. You wouldn't think there's a business there. See, but they figure out, hey, this is, the government allowed them to do it, so they do. They have a business. They're able to take care of their family from their business. I was amazed about that. Uh, we have one Vietnamese lady in the, in the back here. If you think I'm not telling the truth, you can ask her. <laughs> <laughs> right? But it's amazing. Um, verse 25, she is clothed with strength and dignity. 
She can laugh at the days to come. He just said it's not sour. She can look forward and say good things are happening to her. She can look forward to perhaps to retirement and relaxing right? because of all the things that she had done. You know, some of us are in a retirement years, but we're still working. Some of us are addicted to work, but maybe we need to enjoy, right? enjoy all the time we have worked. You know, next year I'm going to retire. I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to do like my wife, enjoy getting up and relaxing right? and doing things that God put my heart to do. Not things that my boss wants me to do, you know. Verse 26, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Right? So she knows how to speak in a proper way. She don't just speak out of, you know, not thinking. Right? So she's not a fast talker, but somebody who thinks before she speaks. She watches over the affairs of the, her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Again, he goes back to the, the point that she's not a lazy wife. And she's, she doesn't eat the bread of idleness, meaning that she doesn't just stay home and be idle doing nothing. She does something. It's hard for us to think about these things when we're dating uh, people, but for men, you have to think about those things. When you're dating somebody, you know, observe them carefully. Verse 28, her children arise and call her blessed. And her husband also, and he prays, he praises her. Right? See, you want praises from your husband. You know, you want your husband to praise you. Sometimes you can do a lot of good and your husband won't praise you. And you feel as though, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of things in vain. You don't get a thank you from your husband. You know, if I don't tell my wife thank you, you know what I will get? A silent treatment. You know, most men, we hate the silent treatment, right? <laughs> we can do with it for a week, you know, two weeks, three weeks. But Asian people can go on for months. <laughs> right? So, we got to tell our wives, you know, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done for me. Thank you for this little thing that you've done. Thank you for cooking for me. And my wife cooks good for me, takes care of me, takes care of my clothes. She does things for me that people would be surprised. You know? And when I try to do it, she said, no, 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 that's for me to do. I told you guys a story about that, right? You guys remember my story? Or did you forget it already? When I was a teenager, uh, I came to the United States at yeah, age 14, almost 15, and my mother lived with uh, my father-in-law, and we were all there together. Stepfather, stepfather, excuse me. And... Um, I have brothers and sisters, older brother, two old, older brother and one, one older sister and one younger sister. And my uh, mother would ask them to do things. And they do it halfway. And you know what happens when they do it halfway? Things should go correct them. You know, you need to make this right because, you know, Caribbean and black prayers are supposed to be strict, right? She didn't do that. She said, Ricky, you do it. <laughs> Always come to me and tell me, you know, you do it, you do it. I used to be, I used to get upset, but I used to do it anyway, you know. And, and then I used to give it to them after, you know, like iron their clothes. I would iron their clothes all the time. They always come and ask me to iron their clothes. <clears throat> and, you know, my mother works in a, she was a, um, she was an operator in a phone company. So she always wear nice clothes to go to work. And when she comes and tells me iron her clothes, it's not just one or two, it's a whole set of clothes. And then, you know, then she would come and give me my stepfather's pants and said, I and this clothes, this too. And I didn't really want to do it. You know, my mind, I really, I'm saying, no, I wish you don't give me this. But I did it anyway. And after I did it, they would say, thank you so much for doing it. My stepfather would be so happy that I did it for him. So their thankfulness and their praises encouraged me to do it, even though I didn't want to, you know. And then later on, as I got older, even few, 10 years ago, he would tell people about it, you know, that I would iron his clothes for him. And he was very surprised that I did that. Not knowing in my mind I didn't want to do it. I just kept quiet, yeah, it was okay. <laughs> but anyway, sometimes when you don't want to do something and you do it anyway, God is pleased. You know that, right? There's a parable about that. This man asked his son, go do something. He said, sure, I will do it. And he didn't do it. And he asked another son, 
do something for me. And the son said, no, I don't want to do it. But later on, he went to do it. And Jesus asked, who did what the father wanted? He said, the second one, right? Because he did it. Right? He did it. So in a way, because I did it, I think, my mind, because I did it, now my, my wife do those things for me. Right? I can do it. I can still do it. People think I can't iron clothes. You know, these kids come to my house and say, Uncle, you can't even iron your clothes. You can't cook. You know, they think I can't cook. I can cook. You know, I used to do it for my mother and my, my brothers and sisters. I can cook. I used to wash clothes. I used to babysit. Go to the laundry, make groceries. You know, I used to do it all, thinking that I would be doing it in the future. But my wife does, does a lot for me now. So usually, as you know, as my wife will tell you, Whatever she wants, I get for her. <laughs> I rarely say no to anything she asks me. You know? And again, you women, that's what you want in a man, right? You do a lot of stuff for him, and he, sh he should also be willing to do things that you want too. Even things he doesn't want to do. Here's some things I don't want to do, I don't enjoy doing, but because it's for my wife, I do it. Right? So it says in verse 28, Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Verse 29, many, many women do noble things, but you surpasses them all. You know, this woman of noble character, he says, there are people that goes beyond what other people can do. And you can look at them and you can say, they're beyond other people. Like we mentioned, Ati Linda, she's so patient and understanding. She's beyond most people, right? I'm sure each of you have a characteristic about you that even your husband will say, man, there's no woman like you at all. That's why he still sticks with you, right? That's how it is. So verse 30 says, charm is deceptive. You know, some women are very charming. You know, you hear their voice, the way they talk to you. It's like so sweet, it sucks you in. Very charming. But charm can be decept deceptive. They can trick you and fool you. Beauty, he said, is fleeting. He says, beauty will not last forever. It can just waste away. All right. Nothing personal, okay? Don't take this personally. But I'm sure none of you look the way you look when you were 18, 20 years old. All right? I didn't look the same when I met my wife. And my wife doesn't look the same when I met her. All right? when, I, when I met her, she was like the hottest thing ever. Most beautiful thing ever. <laughs> but God says our beauty fades away. But see, the memory of what they were and how they are, that stays with you, you see? That's what stays with you. So people may see your change, but they see you the way you were. You see, and to them, that's the way you are. So charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Right? No matter how beautiful you are. And when you say fears the Lord, meaning who has respect for God, who believes in God, who trusts God, who know God holds their life in his hands. They are the ones that you praise. So he says, honor her, all that her hands have, have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. And he said, let everybody know about it. Let everybody know about how good this person is. You know, when I met my wife, I brought her home. I told my mother, I'm bringing my, my, my girlfriend home for everybody to see. And, you know, in, Trinidad, in, in New York, when it's in the summertime, you can, people go around with shorts, and women wear bikini top everywhere. It's just a common thing at that time. And, and my wife came home, and my stepfather and my mother brought a lot of relatives to meet her. <laughs> so it was just kind of shy. It was kind of embarrassing. She felt shy, but I told her, yeah, nobody cares. You know, everybody wanted to see, because I wanted, I wanted to show off my, my wife, show off what God had given me. You know? And even now, my mother still praises my wife. Even now, she still praises her more than she praises any other of her relatives or in-laws. She praises my wife. Because you know, she sees the way my wife is and when my, wife, when my mother is with her. When my mother comes or we're with her, we go see her, she can see that my, my wife hasn't changed. She's still the same. So this wife of noble character, don't change. You know, this is how God wants you to be, right? Not just to your mate, but also to other people, right? To, to your children. 
so that everyone can see you and be proud. You know, make your husband or can be proud, or your boyfriend can be proud of the way you are. Right? That's, that's what God wants. But men also should be a way that women can be proud of. You know, Pam, some people used to say, you know, I waited all this time and God hasn't bring me somebody yet. And I tell them, maybe God is preparing them to meet you. But at the same time, maybe he's preparing you to meet that person. Right? So a woman of noble character. How many of us can say, how many of you women can say that you have a noble character? How many of you can say you have a character that God is pleased with? Or you have a character that God has made in you? That's what God wants us to be, okay? And this Mother's Day, remember that. All right, not just supposed to be good mothers, supposed to be women of noble character. Amen? Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, God, we are forever grateful to the blessings, God, that you've given us. Today, God, as we honor mothers, God, someone mentioned to me this week, that uh, mothers are like Wonder Woman. So we should honor them in that way because they do wonderful things, but wondrous things. And they do many things. It seems as though they have the power of Wonder Woman. So we thank you, God, for all the, the people here that are mothers that have children or that are like mothers to other children. We, Father, pray that you would bless them. God, encourage them. Uh, lift them up, God, for all that you have done and bless them, Lord, in a very special way. So that they will know, God, that you are pleased with what they have done, with the blessings that you have given them, and the service that they have given to others is just the service that they have given to you. So we thank you, we pray for your blessings, and we thank you, God, for all that you do for us and for the women that are here. And we thank you as well for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>